it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Um, different project this time. Uh, back on my third scroll saw project I did the flower which was with pyrography and hopefully I'll just put a picture, sorry it's up here, hopefully of what I did. And I had a comment, I think it was from Tracy Keaton who said it would have just been nice to have it a lot more detail in the video to show what I did with the pyrography. Now my scroll saw projects I try and keep as short as possible because my main channel is really about wood turning and I do sort of like scroll saw work as, a, as an extra. The first thing I want to say though is this is not a how-to. Uh, I'm not telling you how to do pyrography, uh, I'm not telling you what you need to go and buy, the best way of doing it. This video is all just about my thoughts and the way I do things. So this time I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover a, hopefully a, two or three different topics. So really starting from what you buy. I mean, I have the Peter Child pyrography machine, which is not a cheap item. Uh, it's I think it's over a hundred pounds. I mean, there's lots of other ones which are very similar to this. There's some more expensive, and there's some a lot lot cheaper. So it really comes to the start with cheap tools often do work, they might not be so easy to work with as something a bit more expensive. Uh, it could be that you don't have so much control over them, sometimes they don't have the same sort of features. I mean I know when I researched this that when I looked on eBay initially there was ones on there which basically looked like a glorified soldier line, um, I think of a constant temperature and they start off at probably 10, 15, 20 pounds, something like that, which is really, really dirt cheap if you just want to do something basic. But again, you are, you are limited to what you can do with them. Uh, it, it takes a little bit more skill to, to use them, um, but I dare say there are some very good cheap ones and what people use. The old saying of you get what you pay for is true in a lot of cases, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to go and buy the most expensive uh, or even something like this to be able to do just as good as work as other people. So to me when I looked into these the first thing I looked at was with the soldering type um, tool was first of all if it had a variable temperature because you will find whether you use a piece of oak, a um, piece of plywood um, or some other type of wood that they will all have different heat levels that they want the tool to be on there before they start burning the work. So a variable heat control is really ideal, um, which to me was the main element I looked for. So really your, your choice of pyrography tool is, is it's just the same as like buying anything, whether you buy a car, a lathe, anything, or when you go and buy a house everybody's going to have their personal preferences to what their needs are. Now, with the Peter Charles Pyrography machine, you also get the main machine, um, which just runs off an ordinary power lead, like it's in a computer, your kettle. Um, in the IT world, we call these a kettle lead. Um, you've just got, on the front, you've just got your power switch on and off. Uh, you've got a heat dial, and basically the pen just goes in with what looks like just a straightforward couple of plugs and it doesn't matter which way they go round. So it's very very quick and easy to do and like I say changing the tips over it's just literally a case of loosening off the screws here pulling this one out and putting the other one in. So with the Peter Charles machine basically what you get you get and I'm trying to have a look here what you get um, you get the bulk standard wire tip that I've got on there and hopefully I will show it on close up on the camera there. It's a straightforward wire tip there and also with the in there you get a coil of wire in the bag and there's probably about another one, two, three, three or four more of the same type of wire tips. Also what you get is one that somebody's already forged and it's like a spade tip which is ideal for shading and I will come to that in a moment when I come to, to using the thing. 
Now being supplied obviously with the wire, you can therefore go off and make your own tips as well. I believe there are several other YouTube videos out there on how to create your own tips and stuff like that. So just do a search on YouTube first of all. Um, I mean, even before you buy the machine, just to see what you think, um, what you could do with it, um, and especially like creating these extra tips uh, and how you can see them fitting in with your, your work. I mean, once you've got a pyrography machine of some sort, whether it's the cheap style, whether it's the cheap style soldering iron type or something more expensive like the Peter Childs or even something even more expensive, uh, you've got your machinery to, to do your pyrography and it's a case of how you do put your image on your work. Now, some people are blessed that they can literally pick up the pyrography pen and literally just go straight away and draw what they want. Um, it really is a gift and I see a few people like that. I mean, so your, your next option is like when I did the pyrography with the flower on the scroll saw project, I already cut out the flower on the scroll saw and all it was a case was, was with a pencil, just fill in a few extra lines where I could see things were, say like looking at a picture and saying that right, I've got the shape already on the, of the wood, I've just got to fill in a few extra lines and then I can just burn over. Now, if you've obviously just turned something a bit bigger or just even got a flat piece of wood and you've got a, certainly got more of a complicated image or something that you want to be exact to, to compare to a picture, you really need a way of getting that image properly onto your work. Now I'm told that if you do a print a bit like this one is with a laser printer, you should by right be able to put that onto your work and then use some form of a heat which would then transfer onto the work. I have tried that once with, with an image on plywood and I just used an ordinary household iron and really did get an awful lot of heat on this. So much heat that the, the paper had actually turned yellow and it barely put any lines on the work. I mean that could have just been because of the, um, the, the thickness of the ink or the toner on the print. Um, it could have been just doing it on plywood so that is one option which is not always an easy option to deal with but then you the other option you've really got is literally more or less tracing the image on there now I mean I've just picked up a couple of scraps of piece of wood here I mean there's a bit of oak and, and I've cut a bit of plywood and for example if I wanted to, to copy in this example part of this flower I bought something called carbon paper. Um, this is just a small off cut I've got here um, which I was using for one of my previous projects. It lasts absolutely ages. It's dirt cheap. Uh, I think 10 sheets of A4 sheets of this I paid about a couple of pounds for uh, delivered. And the downside of carbon paper is is that the ink effectively that it puts on your work you can't actually rub out with a, a normal rubber like you would do from a pencil. So you really probably just need to just gently sand it back off, obviously if there's lines that you don't want when you're finished. Now there is another piece of another type of transfer paper called, I think it's Sorel paper, S-A-R-A-L. But that is extremely expensive. I mean I think it's something like about £20 for a roll or something like that. Um, so it's, it's at least 10 times the price of carbon paper. So the idea is with the carbon paper or the Sorel paper, you usually put it on. It's best to ideally cut your image down. I mean if I was going to use this on here I would have probably cut this out and I would tape along one edge. Uh, that means that because you often want to lift it up and look what's coming out underneath, that at least when you put it back down again it hasn't moved. And the, so I say, the good thing of carbon paper is, just pure and simply, uh, a bit of pressure with a pencil. And hopefully you'll see on there. There you go. We have a nice, strong 
image where it's copied on. So obviously that's the, the next stage of your, your project really is getting your image onto the work. So using the pyrography machine, I will use, like I say, there's only two tips I use. One is the bulk standard wire, which tends to put a slightly thicker line down on your work. Um, or alternatively, the spade shading tool that came with it as well. So like I say, just switch the machine on. After not, you're better off starting off with a lower heat. It's also best to have another piece of wood to one side uh, as an off cut from what your work is, because the first thing you really want to do is, once it's warmed up, I mean, this, this should be already hot to what it's gonna be. And you can see there, it's burning into the wood really quickly. So if you want heavy burns like that, then that's fine, but I will probably turn that down if I was going to do this and again every wood is probably needs different heat requirements and I mean we'll see this now there you go that's a lot better I can do small quick strokes and start getting slight lines and again if I try this on the plywood it doesn't seem to burn nowhere near as much as the oak so I'm doing the same sort of strokes on here as I would on here. And the oak is burning a lot more than what the plywood is. So start off with a low heat, um, have a test piece, and then gradually work up as you want to. Now the thing with the pyrography pen, unless you really want really thick, blotchy, deep lines, you do need to come across fairly quick in that sort of motion. If I leave that down for too long, it starts creating deep burning marks, where if I go slowly, it creates deep burning marks. And if I was doing this as an outline, for example, I always find as well, it's easier to work towards yourself, to pull the tool towards yourself rather than push away. There are times when it will go away, but it's also easier to go in that motion backwards and forwards to yourself. So in this case, I would, because this burns fairly quickly, it's almost like you're scratching along the thing. So I just turn the piece around. And as you'll see there, sometimes I'm going forward, sometimes I'm going backwards. It's, it's one of those things that you have to practice and see what's, what suits you. And the problem with the oak is because the grain in it is deep and coarse, that it's therefore a lot easier to pull towards you than going over the grain, uh, when you go over the grain, than trying to push. Like I say, as you can see, I don't know if you actually see on there, <clears throat> just that point there and at the top, top of the curve there, I got caught on a piece of grain and it sort of dug in and has burnt a little bit deeper. It's almost a bit like I'd just done that. So again, if I was starting to get things like that, I'd probably maybe turn the heat down a bit more, uh, leave it just five, ten seconds just for the heat to, to disappear from the from the and then hopefully it wouldn't burn so much and when you do your lines it just means that you then often often have to go over a, more than once um, if I was putting another line in here for example uh, let's just separate this okay that's not burning quite so much as before but you can get the same result and like I say it's, it's best to often have it as a lighter heat just turn it down even more, so we're on to one and a half there. And like I say, always have a scrap piece of wood to do your tests on, 
I mean that may well be too low now if I were to put a line all the way down here. See, it's still burning, it's it's a lot lot lighter line and I've gone about the same speed over that one as I did the rest. And, and let's say if I want to increase that I could then just go over a bit more. and forwards just to make that more defined and it's a bit like having a, a pencil if you go lightly over first of all uh, you get a really faint line but obviously the more you go over that line with the pencil it then becomes more bolder uh, and it's precisely what I've done just with that extra line there the heat is down a lot lot further so that's I mean like I said that's the main real feature of this this tool it's it's mainly its limits you can use it for shading as well so I mean I've still got the fairly low heat on here if I decide I want to shade this this center bit it's just a case of going over fairly quickly just quick little strokes and hopefully it'll show up on the camera there that's come up with a nice shading uh, which I would be really pleased with uh, and again oak I've found this oak is very very much different to the ply um, if I was to say for example do a similar sort of shape on the on the ply again I can see there I need to turn the temperature up and you'll see it doesn't take long for the temperature to come up light is so much smoother you can literally run it around like a pencil and again on here if we do similar sort of shading I've got heat obviously a bit higher than it was with the oak I'll just put that down and hopefully you can see the comparisons in there of how the shading goes so changing the tool over uh, if I want to go to the spade tool now, switch this off. Um, I haven't really got normally. I used to have some. Well, let's be honest. I've probably used the top of the pile of the machine. It's literally just a case of unscrewing this. The heat does disappear from this quite quickly. Um, you don't want to risk burning yourself. It drops. In fact, that's so it's it's cooled down that it's not even burning my workbench. Just put the next one in. And that's now ready to use. You can see how quickly it was to change that over uh, and like I said this the spade tool now one of the other things about the spade tool is because you've got this big big flat area uh, which can hold the heat so I mean if I put this back on again I'm going to turn the heat up there to about three and a half and because there's such a big flat area there the moment you put this on the wood the first initial contact it does a heavy burn um, but then because the heat comes away from the tip so quickly because it's gone onto the wood if you constantly use it quickly the heat doesn't build up so quick so like I said the, the, the good thing about this one is is the shading again um, I mean if I just go back to this oak one here if I wanted to shade heavier from the top to the bottom again start from the top because as you can see there it's heavy shading to start with but then the quicker you move it the heat hasn't come back in so I got a really heavy burn on the top there and now because I've obviously removed it from the work it's given the time for the heat to go back in again and I'm going to turn that back down again just going to remove the heat quickly so it now if I do the same thing here I'll just turn the heat down it's like I say it's burning a lot heavier on the top there but already because I'm just constantly doing this the heat doesn't build up very quickly whatsoever so you can do a really really gentle shading and because it's a flat tool like that 
the shading on there, as you'll see, uh, on the bottom part there where the lighter shading is, comes out more even than obviously using the, th the other wire tool. And the same goes really for the ply. Uh, this probably may need some heavier heat, so it's just a case, as you can see, and this is where it shows up. The point of where I touched it, the heat came out so quickly and burnt the wood that all of a sudden if you wanted a constant pattern all the way along you'd have to literally just do a stroke down like that give it a second for the heat to go back in and you can see by those how the heat drops off quickly the, the moment you touch the work that you've got a big burnt spot on there and again you could shade that in constantly by constantly just going over it now the, the other use as I said on this tool is because it's so flat you can actually burn a lot thinner lines than you could with the wire tool because it's probably ooh, I'd say under a quarter the thickness of the wire, maybe a tenth. Um, so as we see on the oak here, which doesn't need so much heat, but we'll just see what it goes like, is that if I wanted to put another line in there, you now have a really, really thin line. And again, it doesn't burn so quickly. I'd probably be inclined to turn that up a bit. Whereas if you look on the ply, you get a lot, lot thinner, crisp lines. And again, you can use this on the, the other way I used to normally use the wire tool, just constantly do little pieces like that. So hopefully that's been of help. Um, I'll say that's my thoughts on on pyrography machines and pyrography and how to transfer it and everything like that it's this is certainly not a how to so it's a bit, a bit of a different sort of video this one uh hopefully next video next project video i will get back to doing some more turning again so if you're looking to get into pyrography um or if you're new to pyrography um hopefully this video has helped you uh like i say it's my opinions only it's certainly not the way you should be doing it. It's not the way I'm telling you to do it. It's just the way I work. And you have to decide yourself uh, whether it's suitable for you or pick pieces from what I've shown, go off, do your own thing and modify them how you want to work. Hopefully those who are really experienced in pyrography, I mean, Andrew, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your surname, but uh, you can see more or less my limits of where I am with pyrography. Uh, there's no way at this moment that I can produce some of the work that you do that you keep showing on Instagram it really really is wonderful and for those who are interested with Andrew who's, who's who I'm talking about I will try and put a link below to his Instagram page um, and you can go off and see some of the stuff he's done which is truly amazing it really is so if this is your first time here uh, please do subscribe uh, and next to the subscribe button um, just click on the little bell and okay the the and tick click the tick box and okay it and at least that way you will get notified every time i upload a video i usually do wood turning project videos every sunday uh, this one's just an exception um, on just covering the pyrography for my system subscribers again as per usual a big big thank you for keep coming back so thanks a lot for everybody for watching and i'll see you on the next project video bye